Well, hello, class. <laughs> I think I said hello there. I might have cut off at the beginning. Um, welcome back to uh, Art 385. And today we're going to be looking at um, editing and also sound. We'll, but in this particular clip, we'll be looking at editing and uh, really that uh, post production phenomenon that helps pull together everything that we talked about uh, last week. Uh, the mezzanine scene, the cinematography, uh, everything that goes into production and making uh, a film, what a film is, you know, all the different ele elements of mezzanine scene, the, the way it's set, uh, the location, even the actors, the costumes, everything that goes into what we see and how that's organized to tell a story. Um, and then um, all the aspects of cinematography that uh, the camera angles and uh, um, even the way it's lit and and so forth, all of those things really wouldn't um, stand on their own. Um, and I'm sure some of you are aware of this: the fact that uh, when you watch a movie, there is editing going on. That uh, it does it didn't all just happen like a play in uh, two hours before your eyes. That uh, there were um, days, if not months of work, of shooting, of compiling all of this footage. There were multiple takes until they got it right. Uh, and then it's someone's job to sit down and to literally assemble miles and miles of footage. Um, nowadays with digital technology, we're talking about gigabytes and gigabytes of footage um, into a, something that we could comprehend. So when, if you haven't already, when you look at chapter uh, six uh, in your book, um, you're going to find that uh, there are um, uh, many different ways or uh, ways of approaching editing or talking about editing. What you are most familiar with is a term called continuity editing. Um, and the idea here is that we are assembling um, a picture uh, that appears uh, to have continuity. It appears to be continuous, if you will. Uh, from the beginning to the end, it flows as one piece. Um, but as I said, really, it's not. It's, a, it's a, really a sum of, of multiple pieces uh, that are being compiled together. But this idea of, of joining all these different shots together um, began very early on. And, and look, you go back and think about Birth of a Nation, Battleship Potemkin. Those movies had editing in it and for the most part it was pretty con uh, it was pretty continuous editing um, now um, your book kind of breaks down for you and goes into detail it, and it, sometimes I do I do I don't want to apologize because it's it's really detailed for those of you who are interested in it um, but some of it gets maybe bogged down a little bit in in some detail uh, they look at graphic editing um, under the continuity editing um, um, heading and that's the idea of different patterns um, and uh, different types of uh, matching you know if a moon is rising and then we see somebody's full head kind of walk into it there's some great examples in the book that you can see um, and and really I, I would say for somebody who's not going into film school that doesn't really matter that much that you would know that term but nonetheless it's interesting to see how graphically um, compositionally if you will there's a bit of an art form there in the way that editors will seek to kind of um, juxtapose or piece together some of those elements. Uh, there's also the idea of spatial editing, uh, and this one is important. Um, if you look at some of the um, uh, examples in your book of, uh, of a shot and you've got a, a cameras at different angles, there's such a thing called the 180 line. Now we know a circle is 360. If you cut that in half, you've got a 180. And the idea, if you will look at your book uh, and see, is that literally if you set a camera on any side of this line, so let's just say this is a circle here and we've cut it in half, um, it's a much easier in the classroom to do this. We can put the camera anywhere on this side of the, the circle, if you will, or we have our subjects, actually, our actor A, actor B, along that line. Put the camera anywhere, close up, far shot, anywhere on that side, and you're telling the audience at home um, what is to the left and what is to the right. Uh, remember, when you watch a movie, it is two-dimensional. And so you do not have, as an audience member, the luxury of knowing uh, where everything is spatially. And so it's the director's job to get it right to begin with, uh, but the editor's job to make sure that he or she 
has uh, assembled in a way that the audiences are going to be lo lost. Um, I put up a clip of uh, the birds for you. It's only a minute long. Um, Alfred Hitchcock film, uh, you know, a, a great film in and of itself, but I want you to watch that clip and notice that how that continuity editing works and particularly spatial editing. For example, um, watch as the main actress, the blonde actress in a green dress, uh, sees a fire racing across the screen. We see her literally look from the right to the left and then over to, I'm uh, sorry, from right to center to left. Um, and at the same time, we're cutting back and forth. Uh, the term cross-cutting, I think, is uh, what you, you'll come across in the book. Uh, between uh, two different actions that are pieced together to seem like a continuous action. So we, we cross-cut back and see a fire racing across the ground. Then we come, so we basically start with her noticing the fire. We cut and see the fire moving from right to left. Then we see her notice it and we see her follow it. If those weren't cut together, your audience could be going, oh wait, first she was following it here, and then she looked back there. It wouldn't make any sense. Um, and I hope from what you see in that example, um, what you read in the book, you'll be able to follow this a little better. It's easier for me to be in person to explain it. Um, but it's very important. And, and notice, uh, try watching some of your movies and realize how they really follow this. Now sometimes the subject can move and reestablish that 180, but for the most part, if a film is following continuous editing, the idea of continuity editing, they're going to obey that 180 line so that people understand um, where everything is within the, the space of, of the movie. Um, now, um, in this regard, those are the two, two kind of big terms there um, that you'll see under continuity editing. Um, uh, there also is the idea of uh, discontinuity. Um, and that some filmmakers will want to um, play with your emotions and, um, uh, and kind of throw you off. You see, we're, for the most part, pretty used to this style. It, it's, it's almost every single movie will have it. But once in a while, they'll want to violate the rule and kind of throw you off. For example, um, let's say um, somebody was going to go and get into their car. Um, and we, we follow them walking to the car, they open the door, and then all of a sudden, the very next shot, they're in the car, and they've already driven away like five feet. That would be called a jump cut, because literally we have jumped in time. Um, and that's, that, that's really uh, one of the ideas of what editing can do. It controls not just space, but it controls time. You see, we're used to following a certain amount of patterns. Um, and we're used to being able to maybe jump forward a, a little quicker within the storytelling. We don't have to see all the detail. Um, but there is such a thing within the shot itself that if all of a sudden we jump from one action to a little bit further down the road and everything kind of changes within that shot, it's called a jump cut. Um, I'm going to try to find a clip from a movie called Breathless. It's a, a French New Wave um, uh, film that they love the jump cut because it kind of it, it gives an appearance of uh, breaking with time and so forth. Um, but anyway, sometimes people throw it off, uh, throw that off as an artistic tool to make you feel uncomfortable or to kind of throw off your expectations so you don't think just the, exactly the same thing's going to happen all the time. I hope that makes some sense there. Um, I'm trying to cover all the big terms that you're going to see in your reading here. Um, but the idea of time, editing really controls time. Think about a musical montage. You know, uh, a movie's flowing along, it's all on the same day, and then maybe Rocky's going to start training for the big fight, or maybe the Karate Kid is out there getting ready for his big competition, and we go into a montage where we see them training. It's day, it's afternoon, it's evening, and it looks like it's another day, and, and we, move, we can move time very fast through um, editing. Um, so, anyways, there's just a, uh, a little bit of an overview for you about editing. Um, it is fascinating. Your book goes into some good details. I'm going to put a couple other clips for you to see some examples. Um, and uh, my, next, uh, my next lecture clip will be on sound. So, if you have any questions, though, please email me. I'd love to, love to hear from you. Thank you.